And hello there! Yes, I know, it's been a very, 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 very... Well, there's not enough varies in the entire universe to say how much of a very long time this has been. But yes, I'm back with two more open Modplug tracker libraries. So I have put together a horns library and a strings library. And if it's done by the time I release this video, there's going to be a new guitar library as well. So, let's start with the horns. As you can probably hear, police cars outside. But yeah, like I was saying, as you can see, there's quite a lot here. We've got saxes, trumpets, and trombones. I'm just going to say this right now. If you're looking for things like French horns and other orchestral type sounds, well, you're not going to find them here because this is more geared towards the small brass section sounds that you'd find in like 60s and 70s pop music. Although there's nothing stopping you using these in an orchestral piece if you really wanted to. Anyway, enough yap, let's have a look at some of the instruments. So, I think we'll start with the trumpet, because, let's face it, everybody knows what one of those is and what they sound like. Right, okay, so, as you can see here, we've got a whole list of articulations, which is, you know, different playing styles. And this also applies to all the other instruments in this library, too. And now let's see, or rather, let's hear those different articulations. Let's do that again, but say, let's use the tenor sax this time. So, not only do we have just about every articulation possible, but we also have what I call the connected notes and round robins too. So, which ones actually have round robins? Well, if you see an RR1 or an RR2 at the end of the file, that means that's round robin 1 or round robin 2, so RR1 would have round robin 1 of each note, RR2 would have round robin 2 of each note, but when it comes to short things like staccatos, I've put three round robins in each sample. And if that sounds confusing, well, don't worry, because I'm going to explain it. While well, another police car speeds by in the background. Can you hear that? There's a lot of police about lately. Right, so, as you can see here, each one of these samples has three notes in it, and those are the three round robins of each note. So, if I play that, you can hear the three separate notes, and I'm pretty sure that you can hear that while they are the same sound, there's a very small difference in each one. So. If we randomise which round robin plays each time each note plays, it will sound more natural, if that makes sense. It won't sound all sterile and robotic. So, this is without round robins. And this is with round robins. So, how do we actually choose which round robin plays in these? Simple! Sample offsets. The first round robin is right at the start of each sample. The second round robin starts at sample offset 028. 
And the third round robin is at 056. So if you want the third round robin, you put 056 in the effects column. If you want the second round robin, you put 028 in the effects column. And of course, if you want the first round robin, well, you just leave it blank. It's that simple. Now, of course, it is possible to use sample cues to get each round robin. So here I've done one using the sample cues. But as you can hear, it sounds a little messed up, but we can fix that. Now, if I lay a grid on top of this sample, which shows where all the default sample cue positions are, you can see the start of round robin 2 lines up perfectly with sample cue 5, but round robin 3 starts way beyond where any of the default sample cue positions are. And that's why it sounds so weird. But what we can do is we can program any of these sample cue positions to be anywhere we want, including where the third round robin starts. So let's make sample Q6 play round robin 3. So I'll just put my cursor right here where the sound starts. Right click, set the sample Q position, and then set that as sample Q6, or whatever number you want it to be. And now I just need to do that with the rest of the samples. Yeah, it can be tedious, but it's well worth it in the end. We go. There is a problem though. A small problem. ITI files do not save sample queue data. So anytime you load up an instrument, even if you did set all the sample queues, all the sample queues for all the samples in that instrument will be back at their default value when you load it in. However, MPTM files do save the sample queue data. So once you've made a song and you've set all the sample queue positions, you don't need to worry about losing them. As you can see right there, it saved the sample cue I set up. Right, okay, let's make a simple trumpet solo. So, I'm going to load in the sustain start and the regular sustain, and I'm going to load them into sample slots 1 and 2, respectively. And now I'm going to start each passage with the sustain start, and then all the notes after that will be done with the ordinary sustain. Right, let's give that a listen. Okay, that little gates of jambler thing I did there isn't quite right, but you get the idea. Another thing you might want to do is adjust the ramping and the fade out. So here I've got the ramping turned all the way up. I have the fade out set to 16384 and I have the new note action set to note fade. So this helps connect the notes a little better but without any noticeable overlap. Now although the long notes don't have any round robins, you could experiment by using some of the other long notes as round robins. Although, I generally don't tend to do that because it does often end up just sounding weird. So, I've now loaded in trumpet vibrato start and ordinary trumpet vibrato into sample slots 3 and 4 respectively. And I'm going to use all four of these as round robins. As you can see here, I've somewhat randomised which sounds play. Getting a little creative with the vibrato. But I've still made sure that each passage starts with either vibrato start or sustain start. So, let's give it a listen. Yeah, you can hear it sounds a bit more random now, but I think I prefer how it sounded earlier. So what about brass sections? Well, this library doesn't actually have brass sections, and here's why. <coughs> the problem with brass section samples is that you would need a whole sample library for every possible combination, 
Not to mention, on top of that, all the different articulations and all the different round robins. But with these individually sampled instruments, you can make your own tailored studio brass section exactly how you want it. The other problem with pre-made brass sections is that as you play more and more simultaneous notes, it's as if you're adding more and more musicians. And for things like this, you really want to keep that small. You don't want to be adding more musicians as you play more and more simultaneous notes. So that's the other advantage here. We can give each instrument its own part. So let's say you have a trombone, a sax and a trumpet loaded. If only one note is to be played, all three instruments will play that note. For two simultaneous notes, you could say, have the trombone and the sax playing the low note, and maybe the trumpet playing the high note. And for things like triads, well, that's easy. We give the lowest note to the trombone, middle note to the sax, and highest note to the trumpet. And we haven't increased the number of virtual musicians. So here I've done something with a trombone and a couple of trumpets. The trombone gets the low notes, and the trumpets get the high notes, complete with rips, staccatos, round robins and falls. And it was all done from this sample library, and it goes a little something like this. Now, the only downside to this is that it will produce some rather large files. So, when you're happy with how the brass bit sounds, it's really best to just sample that and then use that in your own song. Anyway, that's enough waffling about the brass stuff. Now let's get on with the strings. <laughs> okay, so, as you can see, we've got three libraries here. We've got small section, large section, and orchestral. So the two small sections are more for sort of small studio string sections, you know, like you'd find in funk, disco, Motown, that kind of stuff. Whereas the orchestral one is, well, orchestral stuff. Although you could use that in a pop song if you wanted to, there's nothing stopping you doing that. In fact, I myself do that, so yeah. So anyway, Let's have a look at the larger of the two sections because this one has more articulations and in my opinion it actually sounds a little bit better. And as you can see here there's quite a lot of stuff to choose from. So like I did with the brass I'm just going to go through each articulation so you can hear what they sound like. So, there's quite a lot here. You may have noticed that I've done three separate round robins of the sustained notes, two round robins of the falls and runs, and as for the short notes, I've done that in the same way as I did for the brass instruments. Anyway, enough yap, let's hear something that I did with this. One small problem that I've always had with string samples is they tend to have a somewhat slow attack. So what I did here was delay the bass and the drums ever so slightly just to help keep everything in sync. But now let's listen to what happens when I take that delay out. As you 
as you can hear it now sounds a little bit wonky but of course it does free up the effects column on the bass and drum tracks so I can now use them for other things like volume slides but what instead of delaying everything except the strings what about we just make the strings play slightly early well first we'll change the offsets to sample cues which involves setting up the third round robin sample cues then we'll just move the string part up one row and add a small amount of delay and let's hear what we got yep that sounds pretty good now with that all out the way let's have a look at the orchestral library now, since this is made with more orchestral stuff in mind, there's less of the funky, groovy articulations like falls and runs. However, we do have six round robins of loud and soft staccatos. That's like the 17th take of trying to say that. Two separate round robins of loud and soft ensembles. And two separate round robins of sustains. Now, there really isn't much difference between the ensemble and sustain articulations, but the ensemble has a bit more of a stronger attack, so that's the one I prefer to use when I'm doing strings. So, let's do something with this. Right, so, I have a string staccato bit for something I'm working on. I've loaded one of the orchestral staccatos in, so let's give that a listen. As you can hear, it sounds rather 16-bit, rather snazzy. It just doesn't really sound all that good. Or does it? Well, as a certain electronics engineer would say, trap for young players. So what's happening here is it's cutting off the notes every time a new note plays instead of just letting them fade naturally. So all we need to do to fix the staccatos is go into new note action and change note cut to continue. Now let's hear it again. Much better. But we can go better than that. Let's just randomize the round robins. We can even do this with sample cues, but of course, that does involve setting up the third round robin sample cue, which I've already done here. This doesn't just have to be limited to classical style music. I mean, here I've got a funky disco piece, and it sounds pretty good. Yeah, that's one of the music from the Star Kids animated series that I'm doing. And I kick myself here because I'd already made that song before I reinstalled Windows. Thought I'd backed up everything onto a spare hard drive, and I hadn't. So I lost everything, and I'm having to do this all over again. Fortunately, the animation is all done on one of my other computers, so 
At least I still have that, but yeah, I kind of miffed off about losing all that music that I did. Anyway, that's just about it for this video. I've got a boatload of video editing to do. I will say though, you're never going to find a better free string and brass library. Yep, that's right. Unlike other people who make sample libraries, I'm not some greedy swine who charges extortionate prices for my products. I give these away for free. These can be downloaded from the link in the description. I would have put a title card in onto YouTube, but I tried doing cards once and uh, I just made a complete mess of it. I couldn't get it to work. So anyway, that's just about it for now. So until next time, goodbye. And this is like the 17 millionth take of doing this voiceover.